Gordon. So I'm going to now discuss Gordon's model. We may or may not solve a problem today, but I want to discuss the <coughs> core concept of Gordon model because this is something which you are going to use at multiple places. Now, let's just first understand with few numbers. I have a fixed deposit. I have created a fixed deposit year listen mode only please be in listen mode year opening balance interest payout closing balance Let's take an example of five years. I created an FD of one lakh. I assume the interest is going to be same for all the years. Okay. The FD gave me an interest of 10%. Gave me an interest of 10%. As a policy, I wanted to take out the entire amount. I wanted to take out the entire amount. I can add it to the FD also if I want. So my closing FD balance is one lakh plus interest and what I took out. Next year, my opening balance is one lakh. I earn, I take out. And the series goes on like this. This is one situation, okay. Second situation is one lakh. I have a policy of taking out only twenty percent. Policy of taking out only twenty percent. So next year the opening balance increased. Again the opening balance increased. Again the opening balance increased. Again the opening balance increased. It kept on increasing like this. It kept on increasing like this. Now, in this example, which I have done, FD is giving me an earning of 10%. FD is giving me an earning of 10%. That's the return the FD is giving. Or technically, you can say that's like the cost of equity also. That's like the cost of equity because I wanted a 10% return. I wanted a 10% return from the FD and the company is also paying 10% only. You, your ROE and K is same as of now. ROE and K is same, you also want 10% and company is also giving 10%. So cost of cost of FD or cost of equity, let's call it as cost of equity only, 10%. Return on equity is 10%. You invested 1 lakh, next year it went up to 108, then it went up to 116, then went up to 125 and interest is also going up. Can you tell me what is the rate of increase in this interest? How much percentage is the increase? 2000 becoming 2160 or 10,000 becoming 10,800. How much is the percentage increase? So technically growth is 8%. Can you tell me what is the growth here? Clear? Growth is 0%, growth is 8%. Growth depends on two factors. One, how much interest the bank FD is giving? How much interest the bank FD is giving? So growth is equal to bank is giving 10%. Bank is giving 10%. And whatever interest they are paying, how much am I retaining in the FD? How much am I retaining in the FD? I am retaining 80%. I am retaining 80% and paying out 20%. I am paying out 20% and retaining 80% in the fixed deposit, growth is 8%. I change payout to 30. I change the payout to 30. Retention will change to 70. Growth will go down to 7%. Growth will go down to 7. 10,000 became 10,700. 10,000 became 10,700, 11,449. Growth has gone down to 7%. In this case, Payout is 100, retention is 0, so growth became 0%. So first thing I wanted to discuss is growth. Growth is equal to how much the company is earning, how much the company is earning and or what rate the company is earning and how much is paid out and how much is retained. In simple words, this is EPS and this is DPS. Interest is what the company is earning. This is a company, not a fixed deposit now. Company is earning 10,000 profit, paying out 10,000. Company is earning 10,000, again paying out 10,000. Another company earning 10,000 but paying out only 3,000. So it is able to grow now. It is able to grow now. Clear any doubts till this?
okay this is one aspect so first aspect i want to discuss is growth growth is equal to re return on equity or ir or whatever name you whatever was r in the earlier walters formula which can be roe which can be irr which can be roi which can be rate of retained earnings into retention ratio so the first formula is growth is equal to roe into retention ratio now the gordon gave a formula i'll first give the formula and then show it in this example what gordon said is your ke which you said d1 by p0 plus growth rate this is something you would have seen at inter level an extension of this is ke minus g is equal to d1 by p0 and p0 is equal to p0 is equal to d1 by ke minus g let me use this formula in this fixed deposit example this opening balance is nothing but the value of the company today opening balance is the value of the company today so i want to value this company today so what i'm saying is p0 is equal to d1 d1 means dividend of the first year d1 means dividend of the first year which is 3000 dividend of the first year is 3000 cost of equity is 10% growth rate is 7% growth rate is 7% i'll touch upon the formula again in some time just listen for some time answer is 1 lakh i can expand this as p1 is equal to d2 by ke minus g p2 is equal to d3 p3 is equal to d4 now d2 second year dividend 3210 Divided by ten percent minus seven percent. Tell me the answer. Which is the value at the end of first year, or technically beginning of second year? Beginning of second year. You do next year. P two is equal to D three by K minus G, which is three four three five divided. It <laughs> Divide by ten percent minus seven percent. Ten minus seven. What's the answer you get? It'll go on like this. It'll go on like this. So every share, any company, whatever share they have, it is a perpetual inflow. It is a perpetual inflow. Now, I want a return of ten percent. I want a return of ten percent. This return will come in two forms: dividend, capital appreciation. dividend and capital appreciation whatever 10% you wanted capital appreciation is growth growth is nothing but the capital appreciation for example 1 lakh went up to 107 107 up to 114 that is 7% everything is going up by 7% here growth is not only the growth in earnings growth is growth in earnings growth in dividend growth in value of the company everything will go up by 7% so i want a 10% i am saying you want 10% 7% i'll increase the price he is saying great give me only 3% more give me only 3% more how will he give me 3% more he is saying i'll give you dividend divided by p0 now why we do d1 divided by p0 is you invest today you'll get the dividend at the end of first year you'll get the dividend at the end of first year perpetuity is always valued a year in advance this is a area where Nine out of ten students make mistakes. Nine out of ten students keep making mistakes. Perpetually, something I'm going to discuss at multiple places. Question will say, company is going to earn a profit of five lakh in the fifth year, and it is a perpetual inflow. You will do a perpetual valuation. If you are earning it in the fifth year, the value for that will come in the fourth year. The value for that is going to come in the fourth year because you value. Because I'll say fifth year cash flow value in the fourth year. You say fourth year no inflow doesn't matter because perpetually is valued a year in. advance because you do a wrong valuation when you do discounting you will get stuck your discounting part you will get stuck so gordon's model is basically used to value a perpetuity and what he said is there are two forms of return an investor wants one is dividend second is capital appreciation dividend is d1 by p0 this is technically dividend yield capital appreciation is nothing but growth but it is nothing but P1 minus P0. That is the price increase divided by today's price. That's technically that. You need not write this formula. 
but p1 minus p0 divided by p0 for both the numerator is p0 only for both the numerator is p0 only for example it is 3000 by 1 lakh plus growth is 107 107 minus 1 lakh divided by 1 lakh that is the cost of equity that is the cost of equity dividend divided by the opening price that is 3000 on 1 lakh plus 107 minus 1 lakh divided by 1 lakh I get 10 percent I will end up getting 10 percent point 10 so the K formula which you learnt earlier the logic was this D1 by P0 is called dividend plus growth is called capital appreciation and when you interchange this formula when you interchange this formula it becomes ke minus g is equal to d1 by p0 p0 is equal to d1 by ke minus g any doubts on this most important factor is it has to be d1 and not d0 whenever you do gordon's model our valuation says you will have to take the next year dividend you will have to take the next year dividend if you remember at inter level this is one place where there will be a lot of confusion the question will give you a dividend and you will not know whether it's d0 or d1 that will continue even at final level in case it's not clear we make assumption and in fact i give both the answer whatever dividend is given in the question i can i'll assume as d0 and give one answer i'll assume it as d1 and give one answer but basic logic for this formula is here the logic is the cost of equity which is investors required return which is investors required return has two components one is dividend second is capital appreciation the same was walter also but walter approached it in a different manner he said dividend is this much capital gain i'll value it differently here they are saying i'll go through the growth route i'm going to go through the growth route so growth is equal to roe into retention ratio why roe into retention i explained you with that fd example in the fd example as you change payout you change this to 50 percent growth will become now five percent growth is going to become five percent because you have increased the payout as you increase payout growth will keep going down you do hundred percent growth is zero growth is zero clear any doubts on this so under gordon's model i need the next year dividend i'm going to divide that by cost of equity i'm going to divide that by the cost of equity minus the growth rate Growth in few places can be zero. Growth at few places can be zero. The formula remains the same. Minus zero you will do. Now, for doing a Gordon's model, for doing a Gordon's model, I need D1, KE and growth rate. For doing a Walters model, I need D, E, R, O, E, KE. So, KE I will use here. D I'll use here. If these two are there, ROE and E, I'll do return on equity into the retention ratio and get the growth. So whatever four problems we did, all four can be repeated under Gordon's model. All the four can be repeated under Gordon's model. Why it can be repeated? Because you can calculate growth. You can calculate the growth rate. If you have information for Walter's model, if you have information for Walter's model, all those problems, Gordon's is possible. But in some question, they'll directly give the growth rate. They'll not tell you how growth and all came. They'll directly give the growth rate. Then only Gordon is possible. Walter is not possible. You cannot go back to Walter. If they directly give you the growth rate, if they give you the breakup of growth rate as retention ratio is so much, return on equity is so much, then both Walter and Gordon will be possible. So every problem where Walter is possible, Gordon is also possible. You can do the Gordon's model for all those questions. All those questions, Gordon is possible. But few Gordon's question when you are going to solve, the growth rate could be directly given. The growth rate could be directly given. If the growth rate is directly given, you may not be in a position to bifurcate that into ROE and retention. In that scenario, only Gordon's will be possible. Walter cannot be done. Clear? Any doubts on this? I will just go to the theory part. So, this is your Gordon's formula. P0 is equal to D1 by KE minus G, cost of equity minus the growth rate. P0 is equal to fair market price. 
D1 is equal to dividend of next year. This is one important assumption as the question would not be clear whether it's a nearby dividend or distant dividend. Now understand more, one more concept. Uh, when I say D1 dividend of next year, that does not mean if you are in 23, 24 is next year. You are in 23, the dividend for 23 would be paid in another 5-7 months. Then that becomes D1. The concept is nearby dividend and distant dividend. What is nearby dividend is something which is going to be paid in the next one or two months. Something which you can visualize now itself and you are going to get paid. What is distant dividend is something which is going to be paid in 5-6 months or something which is going to take longer time. So, if you remember in your investment accounting, you would have come across a concept called as X interest come interest. Similarly, we have something called as X dividend come dividend. It, an equity share will quote at come dividend price, will quote at come dividend price when dividends are likely to be paid in some days. Moment the dividend is paid, the price will go down by the amount of dividend. Moment the dividend is paid, similarly even in a debenture, moment the interest is paid, the come interest will go down to the X interest. The come interest value will go down to the X interest value. Similarly, the come dividend price will go down to the X dividend price. So, if any dividend is likely to be paid immediately, then that is called D0. That is called D0. If it's going to take longer time, for example, 2022-23, whatever dividends we are going to pay, that can be called as D0 now because it's going to be paid in few months. Most of the companies would have closed their books of accounts. But whatever you're going to pay for the current year which is going on, the current year which is going on, that is not D0, which is going on will become D1 because that will be paid only by maybe July 24 or May 24 or April 24. Some companies have a policy of paying interim dividend and all. Practical world, I'll get clarity. In exam, majority of ICI answer will have assumption of taking dividend as D1 and hence that would be our primary answer. Alternate answer will take it as D0. If it's not clear, if it's clear, go ahead. Wherever clarity is not there, our primary answer will take the dividend as D1. Alternate answer we will give, which will take it as D0. Why I'll give both answers is not going to take much time. There are a few places where I cannot give multiple answers. Here I'll give both the answer because it's not going to take much time. Primary answer Whatever dividend is given in the question is D1. Alternate answer will take it as D0. Cost of equity same. Growth rate formula based. IRR slash ROE. It's not IRR divided by ROE. IRR slash ROE into retention ratio. IRR slash ROE. It's not IRR divided by ROE. Some student had asked me this doubt. So I just remembered that. IRR or ROE. Any of them can be used multiplied with retention ratio. There's another formula. I'll explain that later. I'll explain that growth rate part later. <coughs> Let's do maybe one question on 